Welcome back to China Price Watch. In today's Money Matters, we're talking about PX chemical plants. In a country where economics are seemingly valued above all else, there have been protests trying to stop chemical plants from being built. Many are concerned about the environmental and health impacts associated with the chemical called PX, and mostly they fear the potential impact. Citizens in China have plenty of reason to worry as major accidents seem to be commonplace. And one of the biggest issues for them is that these scary incidents can easily go unreported, especially if it's connected to a government official. Judging by the large number of protests, closing down and preventing PX chemical factories should be an open and shut case if it were solely up to public opinion. But environmental assessments can be easily manipulated for the sake of maintaining a business relationship. And as you can probably tell by now, a lot of money is at play here. And that can change decision making. This chemical is super valuable and important to manufacturing in China, so there's an incentive to keep producing it. China's the world's largest producer of PX, but it still needs to import to reach demand. This has led to rising prices of PX as a result. In 2010, the average price of PX in China was about 1,344 U.S. dollars per ton, but in 2011, the average price soared to about 1,900 dollars per ton. In 2013, the price even hiked to 2,000 U.S. dollars per ton. A fiber company said the price of imported PX is always higher than domestic PX by about 32 U.S. dollars per ton. As Japan and South Korea, the two largest PX exporters of China, in the past two years, PX producers from these two countries all raised their PX prices. In August of last year, the Japanese PX producer JX Holdings increased their price to about 1,500 U.S. dollars per ton, and the PX price from South Korea's S Oil was about 1,410 U.S. dollars per ton. The rising PX prices directly push up the cost of the textile industries in China. Chinese media reported that South Korea has become the largest PX export country in the past two years. In 2012, large-sized PX producers in South Korea increased PX exports by 50% to China. The PX exports to China value about 2.7 billion U.S. dollars. This accounted for about 70% of the total PX exports. In recent years, many PX producers in South Korea all chose to increase their PX production. According to reports from South Korean media, the production of PX in South Korea likely exceeded 10 million tons in the past few years. The reports also said that South Korean PX producers increased their investments because they believe that PX output in China would not likely increase over a short period of time. Chinese media said that information about PX projects are not transparent enough in China, and that this is why the public distrusts those PX project developers and inspection authorities. Frequent protests against PX plants in China show concern from the public about PX projects in particular. Many Chinese experts suggested that the government should make punishments more severe if the plants cause environmental damage. They justified this by saying that in many foreign countries, if businesses pollute, they'll go bankrupt from the huge penalties. But in China, the penalties don't appear that high. Increasing the penalties for enterprises will help improve production and decrease pollution. As the demand for PX in China keeps rising, it's not likely that PX production will go away. It will just likely move away from largely populated areas, or if the government allows it, they can invest in foreign PX producers. This would help get around the problem of protests, which is a major concern for Chinese authorities. But of course, it won't solve any of the associated environmental or health issues. Don't go away, because up next in our question of the day, we're basing your thoughts on PX chemical plants. Stay tuned.